Imagine you're at a party, and someone suggests a simple game to pass the time. The rules couldn't be more straightforward. Two players take turns adding numbers from 1 to 10 to a running total. Whoever reaches exactly 100 first wins. It sounds like pure chance. Your friend goes first, confidently announcing 7. You follow with 4, bringing the total to 11. Back and forth you go. 3, 8, 2, 9, 5. The numbers seem random, the outcome uncertain. But then something strange happens. As you approach 100, your friend starts making moves that seem almost prophetic. No matter what you choose, they always seem to have the perfect response. When the total reaches 89 and you desperately try different numbers, 1 gets you to 90, they can play 10 and win. 10 gets you to 99, they can play 1 and win. You realize with growing unease that you've been outmaneuvered from the very beginning. What you've just experienced isn't luck. It's mathematics disguised as chance, a perfect example of how hidden patterns can transform seemingly random games into exercises in pure strategy. The key insight is both elegant and surprising. While the game appears to be about reaching 100, it's actually about controlling a very specific sequence of numbers along the way. These numbers, 1, 12, 23, 34, 45, 56, 67, 78, 89, and finally 100, form what mathematicians call an arithmetic progression, where each term is exactly 11 more than the previous one. If you can force the running total to land on any number in this sequence, you can guarantee it will land on the next number in the sequence, regardless of what your opponent does. Let's dissect exactly how this works by following a systematic strategy. Step 1. Seize control. Start the game by playing 1. This isn't arbitrary, it's the foundation of your entire strategy. Step 2. The subtraction rule. No matter what number your opponent plays next, you subtract their number from 11 to determine your response. Let's trace through this logic with a concrete example. You start with 1, total, 1, your opponent plays 4, total, 5. You calculate 11 minus 4 equals 7, so you play 7, total, 12. Your opponent plays 8, total, 20. You calculate 11 minus 8 equals 3, so you play 3, total, 23. Notice what's happening. 1, 12, 23. You're forcing the game to follow your predetermined path. Step 3. Mathematical inevitability. The genius of this strategy lies in a simple constraint, since players can only add numbers from 1 to 10. You're ensuring that consecutive positions in your sequence are always exactly 11 apart. Your opponent can never skip over your next target number. When the total is 12 and your opponent plays any number from 1 to 10, the result will be somewhere between 13 and 22. Your response will always bring it to exactly 23. When it's 23, their move puts it between 24 and 33, and you bring it to exactly 34. This mathematical lockstep continues inexorably toward 100. What we've discovered is that this particular game has what's called a perfect information, finite, two-player, zero-sum structure with no chance elements. Game theory tells us that such games always have what's called a solution, meaning there's always an optimal strategy that guarantees the best possible outcome. In our counting game, the optimal strategy emerges from analyzing the game's game tree, the branching structure of all possible moves and counter moves. When we work backward from the winning condition, reaching 100, we can identify positions that are winning, where the current player can force a victory, versus losing, where the current player will lose against optimal play. The arithmetic sequence 1, 12, 23, 34, 45, 56, 67, 78, 89, 100 represents precisely these winning positions. If you can reach any of these numbers, you can force your way to the next one, and ultimately to victory. While the basic strategy is mathematically foolproof, skilled players quickly learn to disguise their intentions. Playing 1, then always subtracting from 11, creates an obvious pattern that observant opponents might detect. Instead of starting with 1, you might begin with seemingly random moves until the total reaches a number that's close to one of your target positions. For example, if through random play the total reaches 65, you could add 2 to bring it to 67, one of your key positions. From there, you return to the subtraction rule, guaranteeing victory while making it appear that you simply got lucky in the final stretch. Even if you start randomly, you can always regain control by steering toward your arithmetic sequence. The key insight is that once you land on any number of the form 11k plus 1, where k is any whole number, you can follow the subtraction rule to guarantee reaching 100. The same mathematical principles that govern the counting game appear in many other contexts, 
often with subtle variations that reveal deeper truths about strategic thinking. Consider this classic puzzle. Eleven matchsticks lie on a table. Two players take turns removing one, two, or three matchsticks. The player who takes the last matchstick loses. At first glance, this seems completely different from our counting game. We're subtracting instead of adding, trying to avoid the final number instead of reaching it, and working with different constraints, 1 to 3 instead of 1 to 10. Yet the underlying mathematical structure is remarkably similar. The key insight comes from analyzing the endgame positions. If it's your turn and there are two, three, or four matchsticks remaining, you can force your opponent to take the last one. If there are two, you take one, opponent must take the last. If there are three, you take two, opponent must take the last. If there are four, you take three, opponent must take the last. But if there are exactly five matchsticks when it's your turn, you're in trouble. No matter what you do, take one, two, or three, your opponent can respond optimally and force you to eventually take the last stick. This reveals our target sequence, positions where you want to leave your opponent with exactly 5, 9, 13, 17 matchsticks. These form an arithmetic progression with a common difference of 4. Starting with 11 matchsticks, your winning move is to take 2, leaving 9. From then on, whatever your opponent takes, you respond to bring the total number removed to a multiple of 4 plus 2. You take 2, 9 remaining. Opponent takes 1, 2, or 3, 8, 7, or 6 remaining. You respond to leave exactly 5, taking 3, 2, or 1, respectively. This pattern continues until your opponent must take the final stick. Both the counting game and the matchstick game belong to a family of mathematical puzzles known as Nim-like games, named after the ancient game of Nim. These games share common features, perfect information, no chance elements, and finite duration. What makes them mathematically fascinating is that they all possess deterministic solutions, strategies that guarantee victory when followed correctly. Games like these have appeared throughout human history, from ancient Egypt's Senate, dating back over 5,000 years, to the sophisticated game theory developed in the 20th century. They represent humanity's enduring fascination with finding patterns, discovering hidden structures, and exercising strategic thinking. What's remarkable is that humans were essentially doing advanced mathematics long before they had the formal language to describe it. When ancient players discovered winning strategies for these games, they were actually conducting sophisticated analysis of discrete mathematical structures. Today, we understand these games through the lens of combinatorial game theory, developed by mathematicians like John Conway and others. This framework reveals that games like our counting puzzle belong to a precise mathematical category with well-defined properties. 1. Perfect information. All players know the complete state of the game at all times. 2. No chance. The outcome depends entirely on the player's choices. 3. Finite. The game must end after a finite number of moves. 4. Two-player. Exactly two participants alternate moves. 5. Zero sum. One player's victory is exactly the other's defeat. When you truly grasp why the arithmetic sequence 1, 12, 23, 34, guarantees victory in the counting game. You're not just learning a party trick. You're developing the kind of systematic, strategic thinking that recognizes hidden patterns, works backward from desired outcomes, and transforms complex-seeming problems into manageable step-by-step -step procedures. These are the same cognitive skills that mathematicians use to prove theorems, that scientists use to understand natural phenomena, and that engineers use to solve practical problems. In learning to always win a simple game, you're actually exercising some of humanity's most powerful intellectual tools. The weird math of games we can always win reveals something wonderful about the nature of strategic thinking. Beneath the surface complexity of most competitive situations lies a deeper mathematical structure, waiting to be discovered by those patient and clever enough to look for it. And once you see these patterns, the world, like the game, becomes a place where knowledge truly is power.